Many people overcomplicate photography. They worry about camera gear this, lens that. They think too deeply about trying to find the best compositions online. They worry about presets, filters, and color grades because they think that other photographers know something that they don't. And they spend too much time thinking and fantasizing about photography instead of going outside and actually taking photos. Now you could probably tell, but I'm a pretty big proponent of just telling people to go out and take more photos. That's because I believe you can listen to me and other photographers waffle on for hours and never actually improve your photography. It's something that feels like productive progress, but is actually just productive procrastination. However, if you actually want to improve your photography, spending an hour a day taking photos or editing photos will teach you so much more than just listening to someone like me. But don't worry. As much as I want to tell you to go out and take more photos, this article isn't that. Today, I'm going to share with you the single most important concept that changed my photography. It's a very simple framework that if you keep it in your back pocket, can help simplify your photography process and help you improve your photography with just one razor. So I'll share this with you guys and then you can go out and take photos. Let's get started. The negative process. When I was first getting into photography, I had a hunch about what would lead me to take better photos. Now, it was just a hunch because I was a beginner and there was no legitimacy to my opinion. Even now, I'd consider myself an amateur, but you guys get the point. But it wasn't like this idea was just bullshit that I pulled out of thin air. It was founded on years and years of trial and error of improving other skills that weren't photography related. But these were ideas that worked in other disciplines, so I hypothesized that it would work in photography as well. To lead into it, let me ask you a few questions that might help you understand the concept. Why does cropping work? Cropping in photography is something that's discouraged by many photographers online. Many will say it's cheating or maybe it's a bad habit to build. I think there's some truth to this, but I also think there's a reason why it works and why cropping our photos can often make our photos better. Personally, I'm in the party of if it works, it works. And I'll take the approach that is most useful for me or gets me the best end result. So here's another question. Why is street photography easier with a tighter focal length. Many street photographers will recommend to begin practicing with a tighter focal length. Despite there being many popular street photography focal lengths like the 18mm or 27 full frame and 23mm or 35 full frame, it's commonly known that wider focal lengths are more challenging for beginners. There's a reason for this too. What it boils down to is the amount of variables you're playing with. When you shoot with a wider lens, you're working with more stuff in your frame, much of which is unnecessary. Similarly, when you crop in on an image, what you're doing is removing all the things that is unnecessary in your image. Extra subjects and variables that have no business being inside of your image can make your photos worse, not better. Another example of this is shooting with a prime lens. A prime lens is a great constraint to have to help you grow as a photographer because it forces you to move your feet instead of zoom in and out to get the shot. There's a common theme here. Many photographers think photography is a game of addition, not subtraction. They are using an additive or positive process instead of a negative or subtractive one. When in reality, photography is a negative or subtractive craft. If we want to take better photos, less is more. If we want to take better photos, we must do so by removal, not addition. And so the reason why many photos suck is because there's a bunch of conflicting elements inside the frame. But if you get rid of all that stuff, the photo will be better. Here's another example. The story of Michelangelo. This is a popular story you've probably heard of before. Michelangelo is a well-known Renaissance artist, the very one who sculpted the famous statue, David. When asked how he carved the statue, he said something along the lines of, It's simple. I just remove everything that is not David. The underlying presumption for this is that David already existed within the marble. And as an artist, Michelangelo's job was not to put things together to make something, although that's what it often feels like we are doing. Rather, it was to be a catalyst to allow what already exists to come to life. The same exact principle applies to photography. To take better photos, remove everything that is not the photo. You see, photography is just pattern recognition. When we photographers go out into the world, we are not creating the world. The world is whatever the world is, and we are just observers looking for opportunities to capture the moment. We are not manufacturing or creating the moment. And that's not a bad thing. Of course, I'm speaking in the context of street, landscape, and candid photography, not like studio type work. And in this context, we are tempted to include every little thing inside the shot. We are mystified by a beautiful sunset or something, and we can't delineate which is actually necessary for our photo. In other words, our photos don't need more bullshit, they need less. So learn to ignore the elements that don't matter. Photography is subtraction, not addition. Photography is negative, not positive. Ask yourself, what am I actually taking a picture of? And then eliminate everything that is not that. 
Does that make sense? If you can remove any and everything that is not what you're seeing in the moment, your photos will come to life. So that's great, Andre. I get the idea now. But what are some practical ways I can actually use this in my photography? Let's get to that. Frameworks for a subtractive process. If you want to apply a subtractive process to your photography, there's only one line you need to remember. Photography is not what you leave in, it's what you leave out. This is a phrase I say to myself all the time whenever I'm out taking photos or editing photos. It's very useful if you're trying to cut through the noise of everything I think I have to or should do. Some other helpful frameworks are less is more. This is a common one that is easy to remember, but it has a slightly different connotation. You can also use the phrase via negativa or via, I don't know how to pronounce it, via negativa, which means negative way. Ask yourself, how can I make this better via negativa? You can also think of this in terms of subtraction. What can I remove from my frame that will make it better? What can I eliminate that won't interfere with the photo? These are all useful and practical ways of applying a negative process to your photography. You can pick the one that suits you the best, is the easiest to remember, or the one that connects with you the most. Personally, I like the first one I mentioned. Photography is not what you leave in, it's what you leave out. So it's quite simple. To take better photos, use a subtractive process rather than an additive one. Think about removing everything that is not a photo before taking a picture or while photo editing. Ask yourself simple questions like what can I remove from my photo that will make it better? And that should help tremendously. But don't just take my word for it. Go outside, apply the concept, and take better photos. You'll learn more from that than listening to me. So I hope this helped. If it did, please share this with a friend. Also, update my new photography zine, The Sinking Sun, is finally out. Order your copy while they're still here before they're all gone. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace.